So uh, I did uh, for my N NWSL expansion team, the Atlanta Soul is the name of my team. Um, and the reason, um, the reason I based out of Atlanta for numerous reasons, which I'm about to get into. Um, so the executive summer, I plan to make Atlanta the 16th NWSL expansion team due to the boom in population and job opportunities in the city, as well as the rise of soccer fandom. Over the next few slides, I will show how the opportunity of Atlanta get the potential to be the most valuable team in the, w in the NWSL. A uh, background to the plan. So Atlanta has one of the largest soccer fandoms in the country. Um, in the MLS, they have a team called the Atlanta United, and they've actually broken multiple records uh, just over this past year. They were the first team, uh, or the fastest team, to get five million fans in support of their games during the regular season. And they also broke the record for most fans in an MLS game with 42,684. Uh, Atlanta United also plays in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, as well as the Falcons too, which is where we're going to look to go. Um, so some of the strengths of Atlanta are is that there's the beautiful stadium, which is pretty much brand new in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, there's a lot of pre-existing so soccer fans, and there's a rising state of the economy. Um, some of the weaknesses, though, are that uh, we would lack having our own stadium um, uh, for a certain time being, and also it would be a new market in Atlanta for women's professional soccer. Um, some of the opportunities, though, are there's tons of huge companies to work with based in Atlanta, um, like Coca-Cola, Home Depot. Um, there's a couple others, too, but I'll get into that as well. Um, they're based out of Atlanta and uh, becoming a hot spot. It's also becoming a hot spot for movie filming which brings actors and celebrities into the city. Um, some of the threats that, um, that could be a, a possibility would be the threat of inflation, like uh, causing uh, a lack of fan attendance, and then also um, the expansion of fandom from nearby teams. Um, there is a, um, it's the Orlando, I can't think of the name of the, name of the team, but it's, the, it's an Orlando uh, NWSL team. And so that would be the closest, uh, like geographically, to bring in some fans. However, um, oh, so here's so here's a little bit of, of uh, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium here, and uh, it's a pretty cool aerial shot. And then, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped over the. Oh, I was saying that will, will not be a problem because some of the pros. Uh, another one of the strengths of Atlanta is that. They have very passionate uh, sports fans. Although the Falcons have not been very good, they still have, oh, they still get a lot of support. Atlanta United does very well. Um, they have a rise in, they have a large rise in youth soccer players, um, both male and female, over the past several years. And um, and also because they've had a lack of um, success in some of their teams, like besides the Braves, they. Are, they would be looking to support a team that's doing very well. Um, <clears throat> so some of the goals for marketing um, that I had um, were uh, what would be, uh, so within the first five years of the team, we would have the highest fan attendance at our conference. Um, um, we would partner with one of the th three big companies, which would be Coca-Cola, uh, <clears throat> Uh, sorry, uh, it was, uh, I just said it too, uh, um, I'm blanking out, I'm sorry, uh, it was, uh, Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, and, uh, UPS. They also have Home Depot as well, which would be a good option, but those three are the most profitable and have the most capital to be able to help us out. Um, and then the next would be to become the top five ranked, uh, overall organization. I think that it's really important to make sure that, <clears throat> like from the front office and um, and all that, how the free agency gets done, how we run our programs, how our staff is run, um, the quality of staff we have. I think that's like the kind of stuff that builds like a trust, trusting fan base, and also a team that becomes like a culture. Um, which also, um, and, oh, and then we would also like to be a top five jersey sales in the W in the NWSL within the first five years, and then we'd like to make the brand a household name, celebrated in Atlanta. <clears throat>
So um, for marketing strategies, our target market, so just a little bit of information about Atlanta, they have 496,000 uh, people for population, and they have uh, 10.8 million in Georgia. So they're being the only team in Georgia, there would be plenty of um, room to grow or fan base. <clears throat> it is over 50% women in Atlanta as well. Um, so the majority of women, and it's actually uh, um, 47% African American in Atlanta as well, which is uh, interesting because they've seen a rapid growth. I think it was like a 150% growth or something like that in the last uh, 10 or 12 years in uh, youth women, youth female soccer players. Um, and so our target market would be uh, young people from 18 to 35, um, women specifically, women athletes or soccer players or fans. Um, also, single people. Um, the Atlanta was ranked this year as the number from the CNBC as the number one city for new single people like moving in. So by having that, you get a lot of like young people more than older, and so you'll have a lot more like groups of friends and people that are looking to go do something, maybe go watch a game and have some drinks and I don't know, just cheer on their team. So I think that that would be able to that would bring in a lot of fans, and I think you could do a lot in order to market to those fans as well. Um, and then our, the other um, target market would be just loyal Atlanta sports fans, pretty much. People that are fans of the Falcons, fans of the Braves, and all that. Um, so some of the resourcing requirements um, for our budget, I, I, we had 100 mil. I put 20 mil into signing players, because I think that in order to really build the fan base, we're going to need to have a good team, and we're going to need to sign a lot of a lot of really good talent. Um, and the longer term, big larger deal we can do, the the better we can build that culture of having a really good team. Um, then I would let I would go with five million to pay uh, the the full team staff and coaches. That would also go into um, like the staffing equipment, um, and then uh, 10, 10 million to advertising which uh, I think that is also really important, especially just for like billboards and things like that, but um, social media posts, commercials, I think it's really important to try to connect with the, um, the, 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 the trends of Atlanta and like some of like, there's a large, uh, there's a large base of like music and arts and things like that. And I think that you can use some of those, um, some of those artists or some of the celebrities coming in with the movies that are being filmed. I think you could get some sort of deals done, work with them for advertising, which would also bring a lot more eyes onto it. Um, like just for example, you could have um, deals with like, rep, there's large record labels such as like 10, 1017, which is a uh, which is a record label of Gucci Mane, who's a very popular rapper in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, you also have like the Migos, not together anymore for obvious reasons, but. Um, there's a lot of different uh, musicians and artists, and local art is also a huge part of um, Atlanta, so I'm gonna get into that in a second though, so I kinda got sidetracked. Um, so then 20 million, 25 million would be to work, uh, to work towards a new stadium. I think that the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is a great option, but I think that it's probably best for us to work towards having our own area, our own facility. And then uh, $40 million would be going to any other expenses, like other equipments, uh, team uniforms, um, et cetera. And then oh, for sponsorships and partnerships. So um, I thought we, the, one of the things that would be a really uh, unique idea would be to try to partner with local musicians and build a uh, celebrity fandom. And then, uh, as I said, try to get a sponsorship with Coke, UPS, or Delta. Um, uh, partnering with, uh, oh, doing, running camps for youth girls soccer teams in Atlanta to build a fandom for the team for young players, also to encourage um, more soccer players within the city. Um, and I think that something that would be really interesting would be to partner with local artists to create special edition jerseys um, that are like based out of Atlanta art. So here's a picture of a, of a mural. Um, I thought the color scheme was like really interesting. I thought it would be really cool if they could try to interwork that into like some sort of um, like, I don't know, some sort of special limited edition type of jersey or something. Um, and then before I go to the evaluation, um, I did come up with a, uh, like a uniform and a, a, a logo. 
I, I did not even know how to up add the media, but I can explain. Basically, the logo would just be ATL, like the Falcons and a lot of other Atlanta teams, and then it would be, uh, in the, within the crest, it would just be like a, a musical note, and then it would like separate, and there'd be like a soccer ball at the end. It's hard to explain. In my head, it looks really cool. Do you have it on your computer? No, I can't. I don't know how to make it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I'm saying, it, it, in theory, it works. Um, and then our colors would be um, like that peach color, just because George is known for peaches, and it connects even more with the community. Um, and I believe that's all for that. And then uh, for the evaluation, um, we need to ask, did we meet the goals set in the marketing objectives, like becoming a top five jersey sales, becoming a top five um, um, uh, winning our uh, conference, um, and all, all that. And then also, did we acquire our desired sponsorships? Um, what's our revenue compared to the league's average? Um, and is there the same demand for an NWSL team after some years that we originally thought is in Atlanta? Um, I think if yes, I believe our team could be worth over $200 million just because I think that the market for an Atlanta women's soccer team would be very large given how big the fandom has grown, especially in such a short amount of time. Cool. Uh, I just have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, real quick, why should Atlanta be the uh, 16th franchise? Um, I think that because of the, the type of fans they have, because of the fact that they haven't given a chance to, they haven't been given a chance to have a professional women's soccer team, um, because they have a lack of women, or they do have some women's teams. Um, the Atlanta Dream did well amongst fans. However, they were very poor, like in the um, standings for the last few years. They dealt with ownership problems, and so they've kind of gotten they, they're they're kind of on the downward spiral. Uh, I think that this is a great way to bring in like a very proficient team that could be really successful. And I think that the fandom would grow. And I think that because of the young population, I think that that growing fandom will then lead into them having, you know, those people having kids and they grow up and it just becomes a lot more um, of like, a, <laughs> I think it just becomes like a, a lot more of like a cult um, fandom for that city. I think that there's a lot of cities that don't have that type of um, uh, connection like with their, with the people who live there. Um, yeah. Um, you said that you eventually want to work towards a new stadium. Do you have like a timeline of like when that might Yeah, be? I mean, ideally, um, you'd like to do that sometime in the five to 10 year range, I would say. I think the first five years, certainly you'd want to be it in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium because um, it is like one of the best facilities you could possibly have to use. And also, um, the more time you give that, the more time you're able to get a sample size of how, much, how many fans you actually have how consistently they come back year year in and year out. If your season ticket sales are dropping or rising or being consistent, I feel like without giving it a solid like maybe like eight years or so, I think it's kind of hard to really know where your where the direction of your team is. Since you're in the Mercedes Benz uh, arena or stadium, will you adopt their um, strategy of keeping concession prices at half the price? Yes. I think that's I think that's a huge point in being able to. That's actually one of the another large reason why I wanted to um, why I wanted to be there because I think that especially having young people, there's so many people that are probably in their you know early 20s who want to just go out and like watch a game or just spend time with friends, and it's so expensive to do anything, especially in the city these days. That um, that's just a, it's just a great option. I mean, you, you you because of the way the prices are cut, you can go get some food and a few beers from a concession stand in at, at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and spend less than you would at a you know an average restaurant so um, yeah I would definitely adopt that I would actually probably enforce it to a higher degree I would see if we could get that prices even lower um, what what do you think is the greatest uh, weakness and threat towards uh, this franchise um I think it's really just kind of seeing, 
think it's kind of just seeing if the people will come out. I mean, it, 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 to me, I don't see a whole lot of threats. I, I, I think the, I think a large one. Like if I go back, if you, if you go back, I think the the main one that I was looking at was the for the for the threats was just pretty much inflation. But I think that that affects all all team. You know, that's a threat to all um, organizations. Um, and I, 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 I really think I really think it would be very successful. It's hard for me to find a whole lot of threats to it, um, just based off of the growing like soccer fandom. Right. Uh, looking at your uh, target markets, um, how would you? Uh, what would your marketing strategy be towards attracting uh, young people? Yeah. Um, so I think that, like I said, working with like uh, people that are like more like trendy like musicians I think that there's a I think that would be a huge way to draw on people like for instance say you get um, say you get Gucci Mane to come out to a game and you you know you pay whatever you pay him he comes out to a game brings some of his friends and they make a video about what a great time they had or whatever you know they, they do something within the team you have a timeout and they're able to do some sort of fun thing with the fan interaction I think stuff like that is what builds I look at I look at you know Philadelphia. I look at Bradley Cooper, and you see Meek Mill, and all these people that come out to games, and it just it just um, like multiplies even more of like just how much the fans all feel connected, and like it's I don't know the bringing bringing all the Atlanta the people in Atlanta and the people from Georgia together I think is like the most crucial thing because if you can get that cult fan base, I think that they're very passionate passionate fans. They need to be successful. They need to run things consistently. I think that. You need to be able to offer them an experience that they would enjoy. So, and then uh, moving on to uh, women and, and female athletes, um, yeah. people that are interested in soccer. How would you target that so, demographic? Yeah, so I, I thought that um, just like the, a lot of like the community outreach and like being like seen as a program that works a lot with like the youth programs. Uh, when I was talking about like doing the camps with um, youth, youth soccer team, youth soccer clubs, and um, and maybe even like schools that they can do that as well. I think I think that those kind of things go a long way. I think that shows. Um, I, th I think it shows that like your program is genuine and wanting to be a part of the community and wanting to be a positive influence on the community. And I think that um, I think that it's I think that it would be good for Atlanta for a lot of reasons. So. Um, and single people. Um, yeah. Just concessions. And keeping it's, the prices low. It's just yeah, it's a concessions keeping the prices low, but um, yeah, I, I think that they could do. I mean, you could do uh, timeout, like you know, give like uh, you could do a lot of different things. You could do like giveaways for like group vacations and things during timeouts in certain sections. There's a lot of different ways that you could. I think you could uh, try to appeal to a larger group. You could do you know. Buy nine tickets, a tenth ticket is free, or something. You buy five, and then six is free. I think that things like that, where young people will be able to save a few dollars and still be able to have a good time. I, I really think that's all that young people are like, like want to have. And then, um, you know, why do you think that your franchise could become a top five ranked organization in terms of? Uh, success, profitability, and jersey sales. I think I think because of the focus on our budget mm -hmm. in the in our programs and in our staff and our equipment and as well in our signing players, we're able to get a high quality of player. But I think that if we hire the best general manager in the country for women's soccer, and we bring them on and give them all the tools they need to be able to bring in whoever they want and put together a culture within the organization, how they think would be run best. I mean, I think that's how you get to like perennial year after year sold out type of teams and, uh, and organizations. I think that's I think that's something where like it builds a trust where fans are going to be with them then for decades on supporting them because they know how they're run. Um, you know, you're you're pitching to these investment groups. Um, what would that money typically go towards? Specifically, go towards. For the marketing or for the uh, you know like the you're you're pitching your organization to these groups like right. the money that you receive uh, what is the most right. dire need that you have yeah I mean the the biggest thing would be just having making sure we have a great like training room mm -hmm. and making sure we have great like practice facilities making sure that we have 
the most like updated gear, obviously, and all like the just like the best coaches um, that we can honestly afford. Like I think like, I, I I feel like all those because those then those people understand how to put in like long lasting programs that then set a foundation for the people to follow them. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, why should why should these groups uh, why should these businesses invest in your franchise? Um, well, I think that I think that it's a market that's untapped for women's sports. I think that although it is a risk to take on, I think it's a risk to take on investing in any and WSL expansion and a lot of different uh, types of sports teams. So I think that the, the the reward far outweighs the risk, especially how we have things lined up to become like. Ideally, it's, it would be through the advertisement money, through the way that our programs run, through the players that we get. It would be ideally, you you can't think of the NWSL without thinking about um, the Atlanta Soul. So, I mean, the you know what I, you know what I mean. The the Patriots of the NFL the last twenty years, the Golden State Warriors of the twenty tens. So, that's the idea of like how we'd like to build our program. Does anyone have any questions? Job, right? Do you have any uh, things you want to add before we finish? Um, I had talked about the the, the NBA the, the WNBA team, correct? The the dream, the yeah, yeah. dream, and how they had they had struggled a lot. So that opens up. I think that opens up even more market for women that are interested in sports. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. All right, cool. Thank you.